Hello, Pan here again. Uh, and the bright sunny weather of last week has clearly faded away and right now we are currently uh, in the UK being battered by winds from Siberia. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Anyway, what's in the purse this time? It's a half ounce silver tiger shark coin. Uh, this I actually received earlier this week from Backyard Bullion. Uh, well, through Backyard Bullion uh, from the European Mint. This was a, kind of a sort of little reward for doing the unboxing video that I put up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and I have to say, it is a very, very lovely coin. Uh, this is one of the Australian series. Uh, you can see on the back that this is, uh, it says Air Australia, 50 cents. And whilst many countries kind of have um, particular things that they choose to go for with their uh, generic bullion, so uh, in the UK uh, we have our, our Britannias with, you know, kind of the, the figure of Britannia. Uh, Canada goes for its uh, maple leaves and... Uh, America has its uh, silver eagles, and obviously there's, you know, kind of Krugerrands, and China has the pandas and so forth. Uh, Australia basically has gone for the option of, uh, what do we have that's most noteworthy? And it's basically lots and lots of very, very lethal wild animals. And so they choose to put those on their coins, which is means that there's a tremendous variety of really, really cool collectible coins out there. You know, kind of, or things that will kind of, you know, kill you ten ways from Sunday, including like koalas and kookaburras. I mean, you know, just look at them. They've got the cold, dead eyes of a killer. Uh, so this particular one is a half-ounce 2016 tiger shark. Tiger sharks, incidentally, are second only to the great white in number of uh, attacks on humans. Uh, can grow up to five metres long and are sometimes also casually referred to as garbage sharks uh, because they have a bit of a habit of uh, eating uh, man-made items with kind of very little regard for is this tasty fish, or is this a, you know, a hunk of metal? You may remember the scene in Jaws where they uh, are performing an autopsy on a tiger shark and they uh, pull out a, a car license plate from it. It's a very, very nice coin. I have to say, I wasn't sure about the frosted effect when kind of I've seen these coins advertised elsewhere, but actually seeing it in person really is quite lovely. It has actually, it seems a lot cleaner than I thought it would do and it's sort of nice to have a bit of variety rather than just having everything just brilliantly polished and shiny all the time. So really very nice little coin and I'll be putting that in a special corner somewhere. So thank you very much for that of um, European Mint and Backyard Bullion. Now I also wanted to use this coin as a little bit of a jumping off point to talk about something else. So you see on the back it has something that's very important for people who are obsessed about their uh, capital gains tax. It has a stated value, 50 cents. Now, so I'm just going to zoom in there again for a second. Is it just me or have they given Queen Elizabeth II gills? Is that a deliberate thing to go with the shark? Anyway, 50 cents. That's presumably half an Australian dollar and I am going to go out on a limb here and say I have no idea how much an Australian dollar is worth, but I dare say that 50 Australian cents is probably worth considerably less than half an ounce of silver. So why is the face value so low? And it's not just Australian coins that do this, this is quite common across the board. So, looking again at this Britannia, uh, 2018 one, this one may not look quite as nice and shiny as others, that's because this is my personal one that I carry around in my wallet and I, I like to get it out in public and have a play with it. And you can see that it's £2, uh, which is considerably less than the cost of an ounce of silver. Uh, 
likewise, if we look at the Canadian maple leaf that I picked up the other day, you can just about see there, 50 cents. So again, <clears throat> we have uh, what are on the face of it, um, massively, massively understated face values. And I've even gone so far as to contemplate, well, is there kind of a rough guide as to how much they underestimate it by? Uh, and my current working theory is that it's about 10 to 1. Uh, so, for example, if you were to go out and buy a, a one ounce gold coin from the Royal Mint, it will have a face value of £100. Whereas an ounce of gold at the moment will cost you more like 1000 uh, and this roughly scales, so if you go down to a tenth of an ounce coin, uh, it will say on it £10. Silver gets a little more complicated because, frankly, for a silver coin, there's, a, there's at least three different values. There's, you know, kind of the the spot weight of about £12 at the moment. Uh, the cheapest you can actually get it in the UK, assuming you, you know, kind of buy it cheap from Europe and get it imported cheap, is more kind of around the £15 mark. And then kind of you've got your full retail price of what you'll usually see them going for on eBay of about £20. But again, it's considerably higher than the than the £2 face value shown on the actual coin itself. I suppose on some level it's only a nominal value and the whole idea of having a stated value on them kind of harks back to the day when we had a gold or a gold and silver standard of where the you could actually definitely say that that amount of gold or silver was worth that much. But it just seems kind of funny, and what seems more funny is, the, I guess, the thing that I really wanted to focus on this issue, this episode. Which is none of these coins. Uh, this is the Platinum Wedding Anniversary 2017. Uh, celebrating the Platinum Wedding Anniversary, I think it's at 70 years, 60 years, uh, of Elizabeth II and Prince Philip. And, as you can see, if you look closely and properly at the coin, it that says their face value, I'm going to flip it over even, God, I'm so nice to you, uh, £20, right there. And, Unlike what you may normally expect from the Royal Mint, the amount I actually paid for this was £20 on the nose. I mean, I had to pay postage as well, but there we go. I, I bought a coin that actually is its face value. Uh, and this is a, a solid silver coin, kind of finished to quite a nice level. I, it's, I don't want to say that it's a pretty coin as such, because I feel that, you know, that kind of just sort of ignores the uh, the faces that are on it but it's you know it's it's an interesting noteworthy one i kind of like the fact that with the with the double face it's kind of a it's kind of reminiscent of the coinage of uh william and mary that kind of slightly odd period in english history where we kind of had a dual monarchy uh or alternatively it just kind of looks like the world's worst superhero tag team um and it's a silver coin, and it's got about half an ounce of silver in it. So this one has actually gone completely the opposite end of the spectrum. But actually, the face value is, at the moment at least, worth considerably more than the um, precious metal value in this silver coin. So, to put it bluntly, what gives? Why do we have... Uh, really quite teeny values nominally for some coins and then ridiculously over the top values compared to the precious metal value for others and I don't really have an answer um, I used to understand that it was that we tried to keep our coins roughly in line with the value of the metal inside them so so the cooper and nickel content of a two pence piece I always um, understood meant that with that material was worth about two pence and so When you had your kind of, you know, your more silvery coins, that was more expensive material, and then again for your pound coins. Um, that's clearly not the case, though. 
uh, or at least it isn't the case when it comes to bullion coins. Incidentally, this was also my logic behind why, when I was a kid growing up, uh, every now and then they would make a coin smaller. Uh, so, for example, the five pence piece that we have nowadays is considerably smaller than the old five pence piece. Where enough do these face values come from? Who comes up with them? And what exactly are they based on? Because at the minute, I'm kind of stumped. Uh, on a more general kind of stacking note, what I would also say is that uh, whilst I've picked up this um, Platinum Anniversary coin because it seemed like a safe bet, you know, absolute worst case scenario, even if nobody is interested in these in five years' time, I can at least take you back to the Bank of England and get £20 for it. But that's kind of the same as just having, like, you know, a nice £20 note. You know, it's 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 not going to go anywhere, it's not a bad investment, but it's not got that potential to grow either. And it's not got that potential to retain buying power the way the precious metal does, so... Not something that I'm particularly planning on picking up more of in the future. Anyway... If you can shed some more light on this video, please, please do so in the comments below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please feel free to share it around. And uh, if you have some spare time, I would heartily recommend having a look both at Backyard Bullion and the European Mint. And I'll pop some links in the comment in the description below. Bye for now.